Hi, my name is Tony Pickler, the director of the Norbertine Center for Spirituality at St. Norbert Abbey. Welcome to the There's a Season Mini Reflection Series. We are delighted that you are joining us. In the Hebrew Scriptures, in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verse 1, it states, To everything there is a season, and a time to every matter under heaven. As the author of Ecclesiastes reminds us, every season has its promise and its challenge. Whether it is the dead of winter or the beauty of summer, opportunities for growth abound. In his book, Let Your Life Speak, Parker Palmer suggests that the seasons, as a metaphor, can frame our spiritual lives. Like all good metaphors, the meaning can be rich and deep. According to Palmer, the seasons represent the cycle of life that we continuously journey on. And if we hang out long enough, have hope, and keep going with any luck, we will see another season. Over the next four days, the Norbertine Center for Spirituality staff is going to cycle through the seasons of life. We hope that you find this concept helpful as you navigate your personal journey of life and faith. Hello, my name is Ann Herlash and I am the program coordinator here at the Norbertine Center for Spirituality. Um, I'm going to jump into this little mini reflection right away and I'm going to start with the confession. This is the first reflection I have ever given. I've been at the center for nine years and without a doubt, this is one of the most nerve wracking tasks I have ever been challenged to do. All thanks to my boss, Tony Pickler. I'm not saying that he twisted my arm to do this, but he did give me the look and said it was an opportunity for personal growth. I experienced fear, anxiety, and panic while trying to rise to this occasion. To be honest, I am still pretty nervous. However, the chance to reflect on what the season of spring means, what it symbolizes, and how to be open to all that spring offers has me feeling excitement, joy, and empowerment at the same time. So what is spring? What's, what's the definition? Wikipedia says that spring, also known as springtime, is one of the four temperate seasons succeeding winter and preceding summer. Days and nights are longer, with daytime length increasing and nighttime length decreasing as the season progresses. Spring and springtime refer to the season and also to the ideas of rebirth, rejuvenation, renewal, resurrection, and regrowth. Parker Palmer, in his book, Let Your Life Speak, said this, and I quote, Before spring becomes beautiful, it is plug ugly, nothing but mud and muck. I have walked in the early spring through fields that will suck your boots off, a world so wet and woeful it makes you yearn for the return of ice. But in that muddy mess, the conditions for rebirth are created. I love the fact that the word hummus, the decayed vegetable matter that feeds the roots of plants, comes from the same word root that gives rise to the word humility. It is a blessed etymology. It helps me understand that the humiliating events of life, the events that leave mud on my face or that make my name mud, may create the fertile soil in which something new can grow. Though spring begins slowly and tentatively, it grows with a tenacity that never fails to touch me. The smallest and most tender shoots insist on having their way, coming up through ground that looked only a few weeks earlier as if it would never grow anything again. The crocuses and snowdrops do not bloom for long, but their mere appearance, however brief, is always a harboringer of hope. And from those small beginnings, hope grows end of the quote. My favorite line, but in that muddy mess, the conditions for rebirth are created. Jesus also tells a great story in the Gospel of Mark, the parable of the sower. You probably remember from this story that there was a farmer that went out into his field to sow seeds. Some seeds fell on the path and were eaten by birds. Some seeds fell on rocky ground and couldn't take root. When the sun came out, they burned and withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorn bushes and were suffocated by them. 
but some seeds fell in good, rich soil. That seed grew into 30, 60, 100 fold. The human heart is the receptive soil to the seed of the word of God. We're the ones who determine what kind of soil our hearts will be. We decide whether we will have a hard heart, a shallow heart, a crowded heart, or a receptive heart. After hearing these definitions of spring, what does it mean to you? Is there a mental image, a feeling, a memory that floats into your head? How does spring present itself in your life? I think one of the first times I experienced a big spring moment is when I made the choice to leave a bad situation. I packed up and left the life I thought I wanted, thought I deserved, and I moved back home. It was an unexpected change. I had mud on my face. I felt like a failure. If I had been in Parker Palmer's Springfield, I would have been knee deep in muck and longing for the icy life I had left. Yet that decision, that mucky field, that constant rain of failure, of fear, of uncertainty that I felt, catapulted me into a world of renewal, rebirth, and gave me what I needed to be rejuvenated. I found my fertile soil. I planted myself in a garden filled with love, friends, support, and I grew into the friend, wife, mother, daughter, and coworker that I am today. And I'm proud of that spring moment. There's always hope during the coldest, darkest winters of life. Spring will come and new life will come forth. In living that spring moment, I learned to embrace that change that spring brought me, not only in my physical world, but my emotional life and my spiritual life. With regard to spring and the spring of your spiritual life, Jesus has to say this in John 12, 24. Amen. Amen. I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. How do you grow in the newness of life? Whether the newness is an unwanted challenge, an unexpected change, a loss, a gain, an unknown feeling, how do we continue to grow amidst the spring of our lives? Will we choose to have a hard heart that never really believes? a shallow heart that withers away, a crowded heart that loses interest in God, or a fruitful heart that bears the muck and mud and finds hope. As I think back to my own personal experiences, there are plenty of times that I didn't react positively to an unwanted challenge. Instead, I faced it with anger and resentment. I didn't have a fruitful heart. I could not see my way to a fruitful heart there are other times that I answered the experience of a loss with a grateful attitude and pushed through. I kept the hope that spring brings within me. We go through the season of spring continuously throughout our lives. The beauty of this is that God goes through it with us, beside us, regardless of how we handled the last season of spring. I would like to leave you today with one last thought Spring provides a wonderful reminder to us that we should be living a life full and leaving the dead old parts of life behind. Jesus has so many more stories of seeds, agriculture, plants, and so forth to show us what the kingdom of God is all about. May you find yourself having a fruitful heart more times than not. Peace.